As school districts across the U.S. begin a new academic year, the International Well Building Institute, along with 21st Century School Fund and the National Council on School Facilities, is releasing a new report that takes a look on the current state of our nation's school funding and draws attention to the disparity across the U.S. in funding efforts. So with us today is Rachel Hodgkin. She's the president and CEO of the International Well Building Institute, and she's here with the details. First of all, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Jordan. Of course. So I want to know what are the key findings of the study regarding the current state of our school buildings when it comes to health and safety? Well, first of all, the state of our school infrastructure is pretty awful. We were already facing a national emergency and then COVID-19 took a long-term bad situation with our school buildings and made it truly urgent. So the 2021 State of Our Schools report shines a light on the fact that severe and chronic underinvestment to the tune of $85 billion a year, a year is eroding the country's ability to provide safe, healthy, and efficient schools. That is up 85% since the 2016 report. And I can tell you that where our kids learn matters to their ability to get a quality education. And even though states and local districts are doing their best to maintain and invest in their school facilities, we are falling further and further behind. Well, of course, that is not good news to hear, but what should parents be thinking about then to help make our school districts safer? And can that include using some of the money for schools in the American Rescue Plan, which came into law earlier this year? Absolutely. Parents should be asking a lot of critical questions right now, starting with what's been done to improve the air quality in my school. And yes, those recovery funds do include some money that can be used for school facility improvements, but they don't have to be. So the other thing that parents should be doing is picking up the phone and calling their senators and calling their congressmen because there's $82 billion on the table for school facilities improvements in the infrastructure bill that's currently being debated in Congress. And we need to make sure that that money stays in the bill and that it gets distributed to the students, the teachers, and the communities that need it most. Wow, and just seeing some of those images there of the parts of the buildings. But do you have any examples of schools maybe in our viewing area that are doing well regarding health and safety? And is there anything that other schools can learn from that? Well, I once visited a school in Palm Beach County that was LEED certified, and it was such a shining example of everything that a state-of-the-art 21st century school could be. The students were working with a local mentor to develop a business plan for how they were going to sell the proceeds of all of the healthy fruits and vegetables that they sold from their hydroponic gardens. What's more is that the state of the school facility was supreme. The air quality was excellent. The water quality was awesome. Those students have the best opportunity that you could imagine to learn in facilities that support their education. And yet we know that in Florida, most of the schools are not in that state. Florida's high poverty school districts receive $1.5 million less on average than low poverty districts. That's a pretty shocking inequity. Definitely, and you know, kids shouldn't have to worry about that at all. They should just be able to go to school and learn. So thank you so much for the information today, but if somebody wants to get a little bit more, where can they go? They can visit stateofourschools2021.org. There they can download the report for free and they can get a state-specific profile on what's happening in Florida. All right, well, thank you so much for your time today, Rachel. Thank you for having me, Jordan. Of course, and if you'd like to see this segment again or get more information, go to firstcoastliving.net.